Hello everyone, welcome to the course on computer aided drug design. We will continue on the topic of uh, QSAR. Uh, today we will look at a couple of softwares which uh, can uh, give us uh, certain descriptors, even the structures. In fact, uh, there are many softwares in the net, which free of charge, web servers are there, uh, from where we can get uh, thousands of descriptors. I am going to show you a couple of them and uh, you guys can explore further. Uh, one of them is called a ChemDesk. Okay? This is an integrated web based platform for molecular descriptor and fingerprint computation. It's called ChemDesk. Um, let's have a look at that. Okay, this is the ChemDesk. Okay, as you can see, this is the uh, address of this. Uh, it's got a uh, lot of uh, descriptors. Look at this descriptors library. Um, see, look at this. Um, so, uh, ChemDesk. It can calculate uh, 787 descriptors. Okay, there is another software is there. There are so many different softwares there, okay, which can calculate. This this software can calculate 103 descriptors. This can 196 descriptors, 787. So there are many softwares, PayDell and um, so on. Okay, let's uh, look at uh, ChemDesk. Okay, as I said. Uh, MDesk can calculate almost 1135 descriptors. Um, there are zero dimensional descriptors, um, one dimensional descriptors, two dimensional descriptors, three dimensional descriptors. And um, as you can see, the next column. Okay, these are the uh, descriptors calculated by each of these softwares uh, shown in this picture above. Okay, Chem OPY, ChemDesk, and so on. Um, and the details of these descriptors if you go here it gives you all the details okay, so we can uh, get the details here um, okay so uh, So it can calculate a lot of descriptors here. Okay. It's called constitutional descriptors, connectivity descriptors, basal descriptors, PESAC, so topology, kappa descriptors, so on, so on, so on, so on. And each one there are so many numbers. This is the number here. And if you look here, um, it gives you the details of uh, these descriptors. Okay. So if you want to go into more details, we can click on them. It will tell you, for example, topology descriptors okay a lot of topology parameters are there okay a lot of topology descriptors are there okay so um, we can um, upload a file for example we can upload a uh, SDF file um, so uh, choose file I have I think aspirin or something somewhere stored yeah I have aspirin I can get that Aspen, then we can do either 1D, 2D, or 3D descriptor. 1D, 2D submit. So it will do some calculations and then give the details about uh, that particular. Yeah, so it, as you can see, it's giving uh, descriptors. Large number of descriptors. Aspirin is there, so I can do a 3D descriptor calculation also. Submit. Okay, so it's given uh, some 3D information about the 
descriptor molecule see as you can see so you want to get the more you can download this as csv file and then save it for further calculation if you want to know more about the details of uh, what each descriptor means i did uh, show you how to find out right um we can also give uh, the smile notation of the disc uh, of the molecule also for example see see uh, Like that you know this is a smile notation then I can do a submit okay again it calculates the descriptors uh, for that molecule and um, so this is a CH2 CH double bond CH uh, CH2OH okay this is an alcohol with a um, unsaturated alcohol okay butanol unsaturated BT9 um okay so this is a very nice um software okay so the descriptors library as it as i showed you it can show you a lot of descriptors i can calculate okay uh, and as i said there are apart from chemdes which can calculate 1135 we also have uh, other softwares like uh, okay blue des and uh, paddle and rd kit each of them can calculate some amount of descriptors so you have a huge number of uh, um, descriptor calculation softwares which are free for you okay so you don't need to pay at all okay, remember you don't need to pay at all we can get a lot of uh, uh, descriptor calculator okay uh, using softwares okay similarly um We also have the Swiss ADME. If you remember Swiss ADME, we have seen that many times. That also can calculate a few descriptors for you. Okay. Okay, Swiss ADME can uh, calculate uh, a lot of descriptors. So, you remember this software? I think many times I have shown you this. Um, so we can. Uh, draw this then we can do this then we can say run but uh, the number of descriptors it calculates are very limited so if you see log as solubility um that sort of thing actually not many predictable bonds and things like that but if you want to do a real qsir chemdes uh, is a better uh, option or we can go to the e dragon okay and e dragon calculates 2000 plus descriptors okay for a qsir so we say dme use only important um, uh, parameters like solubility log p uh, and uh, bioavailability and so on but if you are interested in qsir you want large number of descriptors then ideally you should go to this e dragon is uh, developed by milano chemimetrix uh, by professor todicini it's a huge number of descriptors so you can do it online Uh, look at this okay so welcome to e dragon mm, this is uh, the thing uh it's got so many descriptors okay thousands and thousands and thousands look at this huge number of descriptors numbers uh, list of molecular descriptors it says okay now um, how do we run molecules it's quite simple we can upload data uh, we need to upload a sdf file sdf file uh, you can uh, get it uh, downloaded from uh, if you remember uh, um, your zinc database zinc database gives you sdf file right sorry yeah uh, let's look into again uh, we can run uh, yeah i can do aspirin open it's been loaded so we see upload file
okay so the file has been uploaded we close this so aspirin has been loaded then we say submit your task okay so it will calculate all these descriptors so it's doing calculations okay so it's doing the calculations goes to the server and does it um okay so downloaded it's done okay so what do we do we go here uh, we say results as text okay so uh, we can see the results here okay yeah so this is your uh, input file as you can see for aspirin okay this is input file for aspirin um, okay so um, results have come so control control x control a control c i copied the entire result then i can go to excel for example and then um, i can say control b okay so all your results have come so uh, So this is your molecule, okay. Um, okay, so you can see this molecule. We can convert this text data to numbers in columns. Basically, we converted that into text to columns. Okay, so it's easy for us to view. Ah, okay. So as you can see, it's very nice to view now. Okay, so molecular weight is 179. Um, Number of carbon, number of nitrogens, and so on. Okay. Aspirin this is. It also gives you some log PS values. Okay. Finally, log solubility also. So, a lot of descriptors you can calculate. Okay, so what's the use of this? Uh, um, imagine I want to do one more, one more, one more, and so on. Now I want to upload another file, say. Okay, we looked at aspirin. Uh, we can look at uh, another molecule, for example. Okay. That's called a zinc. Uh, It's called zinc 53. Let's see what is that zinc 53. I don't remember that. Um, okay, let's look at a zinc uh, 6694. Okay. Uh, Yeah, 
yeah this is a coxib this is a um yeah this is selective cyclooxygenase inhibitor okay this is coxib okay. as you can see it's got a uh, sulfur two oxygens here this is a selective cyclooxygenase uh, um cox2 selective cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitor actually um so we will load that one upload data Browse, open, upload file. Yep, file has been uploaded. Now submit your task. Yeah. So it started this task. Results as text. Okay, open results in a browser. Yeah. Um, so control uh, X, control A, control C, uh, and then uh, go. Fourteen. So we can uh, convert data into text to column. Okay, fixed width, delimited width, next, space, next. So 314 it is, right? So, uh, so this is a coxib, um, it is a selective. Uh, Cyclooxygenase like 2 inhibitor. We can remove this column also. So, okay. So, this is another molecule. Okay. There's a different molecular weight and so on. So, it goes the descriptors. So, if I know the activity, uh, that is my uh, Y for my QSAR, and uh, these are the X's. Okay. If I have many molecules like this, activities are known, I can uh, develop a regression relationship with the um, one descriptor model or two descriptor model depending upon the number of data you understood so uh, dragon is also a very powerful um, software for getting large number of descriptors okay the details of the descriptors we can get it uh, um, as I said uh, we can get the details of the descriptors uh, from it okay details of descriptors we can get it from the uh, main page of the software okay so um, well, like I said if I have the activity details um, that will be my Y my regression relation I can select the best descriptor and then develop a regression relation Y is equal to say uh, MX plus C type X could be my uh, uh, Okay, one of the descriptors. So, depending upon the number of data points, I can have one descriptor model or two descriptor model or many descriptor model. Okay, so we talked about Dragon, then I showed you the other software, um, ChemDesk, that also cal calculate descriptors. Okay, huge number of uh, uh, softwares are there. Okay, so you don't need any commercial software. As you can see, so many different softwares are there which can calculate descriptors for you. Okay, so. Um, um we have um, imagine some activity we have uh, some descriptors okay so um, how do you go about doing this business of uh, calculating uh, um, the regression relation the simple if it's a simple um, model then we can it's not very difficult for us to do we can use excel for example Okay, so um, I can say molecular volume, 
Molecular volume, as you can see, 420, 332, 198, 467, 467, 359, okay, then um, activity could be 2.34, 1.89, 0.23, 3.67, 2.55, okay, log P, um, 2.8, 4.6, minus 0.3, 3.7, minus 1.5. It's quite hydrophilic. Um, then you are uh, dipole 0 0.97, 2.23, 3.38, 3 um, 0 0.45, 1.7. 7. Okay, now we have only five data points. So at the most we can develop only one um, one um, independent variable regression relationship either with molecular volume or log p or dipole only so how do i find out i can use a correlation to see whether there is a correlation between uh, the x this is the x and the activity let me see what is it. oh it's quite good molecular volume it shows quite good correlation let's see whether log p also has a correlation not, not so good. Let us see dipole. How good the dipole has a correlation. Okay, so this also has a very good correlation, negative. That means as the dipole increases, activity decreases. Now molecular volume is positive. So as the molecular volume increases, activity also increases. Okay, now let's draw a um, graph also. Hmm. We can uh, insert scatter. Okay, so we get a scatter plot as you can see as the molecular volume increases, your um, um, activity also increases. This is molecular volume on the x axis, activity. So we can uh, draw a um, trend line. I think uh, you all guys must be good at uh, um, Excel. Okay. Uh, display equation and uh, display r square value close okay so uh, this is your qsir activity is equal to 0 0.0117 into molecular volume minus 2.025 r square is pretty good point equal to 0.92 which is very very nice um, let's do with the dipole also because dipole also is good uh, so we may have a QSAR with a dipole also. So let's look at dipole. X is equal to dipole. Y is okay. Okay, so as the dipole increases, activity decreases. Like I showed you, it's a negative correlation here. And if you look at the R square here, R square, this is also good. Um, so this is a QSAR or with respect to dipole. X is equal to minus 1.03 because it's going down into dipole plus uh, the 3.9 and um, here molecular volume degradation is um, activity is equal to 0 0.0117 molecular volume minus 2.254 so uh, so we can have two uh, either one of the QSARs R square here is 0.92 R square here is a little bit less that doesn't matter it's not so so greatly bad so we can have depending upon what you feel like Whereas if you plot uh, the um, log P, the correlation is very poor, 0.38 only. Uh, so um, we will not go for this type. So uh, Excel is a good uh, software if you want, if you are interested in uh, looking at uh, 
um, regression equation with one um, independent variable model okay with one independent so we can work out with Excel that's not a big deal so um, we can have a molecular volume uh, or like I showed you dipole or we can have multiple linear regression but then multiple linear regression um, is uh, not possible because the number of data points is only five general rule of thumb is if you have five data points go with only one descriptor model don't go for more if you have ten maybe um, so this generally is not a good idea okay or we can have partial least square a lot of statistical terms come in actually okay so uh, this is how uh, we go about uh, doing uh, um, simple structure activity relation mathematical relation okay so what do we do we need to build models uh, calculate minimum energy confirmation if you are looking at uh, minimum structural features then calculate descriptors I showed you some softwares um, you may be able to find more softwares then you need to shortlist descriptors you cannot take uh, like in uh, uh, dragon there are uh, almost 2000 descriptors we cannot take all of them so we need to based on the correlation coefficient like I showed you here right um, the Excel the correlation coefficient for molecular volume is very good uh, dipole is next good so I may go with molecular volume so this is what it means shortlist descriptors based on correlation coefficient these descriptors should not be cross correlated that's uh, another important thing okay so uh, what does that mean there should not be a correlation between this and this or this and this let's look at whether there is a correlation between this and this maybe there is let's see then we cannot use the same descriptors now this is molecular volume and ah okay molecular volume and dipole has very high correlation okay so obviously if you are thinking of a, a two descriptor model we cannot use both they are cross correlated you understand two descriptor model you have to first check that that there is no correlation between x's x's means independent variables understand you can see minus 0.99 molecular volume and dipole whereas if you look at uh, molecular volume and log p I don't think they will be correlated but of course we are not going to take log p here because uh, the um, co correlation of log p uh, with the activity is quite low but uh, definitely we will not take this and this because they are both correlated okay so that's a very important point they should not be correlated they should be dissimilar as dissimilar as possible so we can do cluster analysis we can do so many things to shortlist descriptors shortlisting descriptors is a big challenge so because you have 2000 descriptors and I may have only 10 data points so I need to select two descriptors out of this so I may make a mistake um, I may not select the right descriptor I may miss out descriptors so that's a biggest challenge in QSR that's the most biggest challenge in QSR how to select the correct descriptor how to not select the wrong descriptors how to not select the descriptors which are correlated with each other so all these you need to consider and there are many approaches once we do that we develop a regression relation it could be a one parameter regression if you have one descriptor y equal to mx plus c if it is two parameter y equal to m m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus c uh, and then you do a lot of statistics there are something called r square adjusted r square predicted r square f test residual so many things are there okay uh, then when you have a large number of data you don't use all of them for calculating regression you divide the data in two types training set test set so what do you do you use the training to develop the descriptor uh, and the regression and then with that regression you try to predict the values from the test set okay so if I have say six data points what will I do I will take only five data points and develop my regression and then try to predict uh, for the sixth one and see how good the prediction is and that's called a test set okay so if I have say seven or eight I may take uh, five or six in the training set the remaining two will be in the test set generally they say 20 percent 20 percent should be in the test set 80 percent of the data in the training set so if you have large number of data you just don't develop regression with all the data points and um, you follow the 80 20 20 percent for test set 80 percent for training set so you train your uh, uh, model uh, and calculate the um, various terminology various terms like uh, m and c 
uh, with 80 percent of the data and then um, you predict the remaining 20 percent of the data using that model to see how good the prediction is okay that's very very important okay then you can also test with external data um, you make experiments cal uh, get some um, results activity and then see whether so you need to do all this to be sure that your model is uh, good and it has got good predictive capability that's very very important so the descriptors like topology electronic thermodynamics structural all these are descriptors which i showed you using different uh, web servers which are free uh, for you to use okay um, so we need to have at least five data points for a regression equation with one um, descriptor model and when you have uh, uh, data set don't use all of them for training and developing the model use only 80 percent of them for uh, training and remaining 20 percent use as a testing out the test set okay so it's very very important that you have a training and a test set 80 20 and uh, your model should be able to predict the results of the test set whereas you use the 80 percent of the data for developing a regression relation without test set a regression a qsr is of no use it's very very important that you also have a test set okay we will continue more on this qsr in the next class as well thank you very much for your time